everyone, this is Samantha from The Dancing Soap Dish. Easter is drawing near and this is our first Easter soap tutorial for this year. Today we're going to make these beautiful Easter melt and pour soap bars from cookie cutters. Yes, there is a simple way to tweak a cookie cutter to turn it into a soap mold. I'm going to be sharing that with you today. And this is part of a new video series from The Dancing Soap Dish called The Tweak of the Week where I share with you everyday items and tools from other crafts and hobbies that with a slight tweak can be used for soap making and other projects. So I'm really excited. This week's tweak of the week is how to turn a cookie cutter into a soap mold. Let's get started. So here we are. These are the cookie cutters that we're going to be using today, obviously. But also I want to point out that each one of these bars has a lovely little paint pouring design on it. Uh, sort of like a, a little flower that you can see. Uh, this one here, oh, had a little bit of trouble with that one, but I'll talk you through that too. And basically, I made these using acrylic paint pouring tools. So these little paint pouring funnels here, I've heard people complain online that they are too small to be good for anything, but guess what? They are great for soap because they fit perfectly inside soap molds to make beautiful paint pour effect soap bars, just like this. So here I have some cookie cutters. I've just been collecting them over the years. These ones came from the supermarket. I'm not gonna use all of them. These ones here are a bit too narrow for the paint pouring tool effect that I'm after. So I'm gonna pick out sort of like the, the chubbier ones, uh, like these eggs and this uh, rabbit paw print and this rabbit here, and the rest I'll just pop off to the side. Yeah, so these ones will do nicely. I'll be able to make good designs out of these. So the problem with using cookie cutters as soap molds is obviously the soap can leak out the bottom. So how I'm going to tweak them is I'm going to put them on a tray with a piece of grease proof baking paper. And then I'm also going to get some plasticine. Yeah, I stole this from my kids. But it's some coloured plasticine. I'll just tear off one long strip here. I've torn off the pink. That's all I need. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plasticine to seal the edges of the cookie cutter to the piece of grease proof paper. And that will stop the soap from leaking out of the bottom when I pour the soap into the cookie cutter. So plasticine is oil based. It's non porous. It will not stick to your soap if some of it happens to come in contact with it. A bit gummy definitely gummier than you know play-doh or other types of dough and what I'm doing is I'm pushing it into the cookie cutter the side of the cookie cutter but also down onto the paper at the same time so you want it to sit nice and flat there against the bottom of the paper but also against the side of the cookie cutter and that will seal that up quite nicely so this is my preferred tweak for making a cookie cutter leak proof. Uh, in the past, I have poured a layer of soap onto the grease proof paper and then pushed the cookie cutter into it, sort of sealing the sides. And I've had mixed success with that because cookie cutters aren't necessarily straight. There's Some of them are incredibly wonky and they just don't sit level. So this is definitely the way I prefer to do it. So here they are, they have been tweaked and now they are leak proof soap molds instead of cookie cutters. I've worked out that I'm gonna need about two and a half ounce for each of these, so 10 ounce of soap all up to fill them. I'm using Citrus Bloom Springtime Blend from doTERRA to scent them because it's a beautiful springtime blend, which is great when you're making Easter soap. And obviously color wise, I'm going to do the traditional pastels for Easter. I have some beautiful pink, yellow, peach, and blue that I've just taken off my double boiler. I've also got my isopropyl alcohol ready to go. I'll just take these spoons out now and I'll start pouring. So first up, I'm just going to pour a base for the paint pouring design to rest on. So I'm gonna fill up my cookie cutters about three quarters of the way. Uh, I'll start off with just filling them halfway with a base color. No, oh, spilt it already. Give it a spray to get rid of the bubbles. I'm going blue for my bunny. There we go. 
He's going to be really cute. I like him. That's a really pretty blue too. I really like that. I'm going to fill this cookie cutter with a beautiful pastel yellow. And lastly, I've got here this peach colored egg. All right, and I'll give that a spray. Now, just for interest sake, I'm actually going to add a second color to these just to have a little bit of a swirl in them so that when you're using the soap bar, it's, um, you know, you've got two different colors. It'll look really pretty as you're using the soap bar away in the bath or the shower. I'm going to add some blue to the yellow here and give it another spray with the alcohol, which, as you can see, helps that sort of um, sink in there and all sort of merge together. Pink is going with my blue. Oh man, it's spilling it everywhere today. I'm not normally this messy. Well, at least I'm happy that I don't have leaking soap everywhere. So my plasticine and cookie cutter tweak is definitely holding up. There is no soap leaking out other than the stuff I've spilt. Um, just putting some yellow into this peach here. And then finally, I'll put some peach into this pink rabbit's paw. Uh, these colors are actually pretty close to each other so I might just also put a little bit of yellow in here just so there's some contrast there we go spilling it everywhere again oh man okay so as you can see those are much nicer now they've got that secondary color in them with that beautiful swirl I'm just going to wait 20 minutes or so for those to be touch dry and uh, then I'll be back so here we are it's about 20 minutes later and these soaps are touch dry now. They're not fully set, um, but they're set enough for me to be able to do the next stage. I'm going to be using these paint pouring tools to make a pretty design and to fill up my cookie cutters the rest of the way. Uh, as you can see, there's a funnel and then you just pop the funnel down and it shoots the soap out in all different directions. I also have a ramekin filled with boiling water and what I use this for is uh, to clean my funnels in between soap bars. And a spoon to fish them out because the water is hot. So don't go sticking your fingers in there. Like always, I've got my isopropyl alcohol on hand. Uh, it's definitely going to come in handy during this next stage. Now, I've just brought over my soap, ready to go. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the surface of the soap with alcohol to help the next layer adhere well. So I'll start with this yellow Easter egg cookie cutter. Just gonna give it a good spray. And then I'm gonna continue with the base color as the first color I pour. So I'm gonna pour just a thin layer of the yellow. And then I'm gonna pop the paint pouring tool into that layer. And then I'm gonna start pouring different colors into it. So I'll pour the next color all the way to the top of the funnel and then let that sink down. Once it's done that, I'll pour another color all the way to the top of the funnel and wait for that to slowly sink down. And then I think I might then just go back to the first color. Again, all the way to the top. Wait for it all to sink down and then pick up my funnel, drop it into the boiling hot water and spray my design with the alcohol. So you want to do all this in quick succession. You want to work quite quickly because if the soap sets when you're halfway through one of these steps, you're in big trouble. So again, I've sprayed that one and I'm going to pour just a thin layer of the pink. I'm popping in the paint pouring tool. Next, I'm adding some peach. all the way to the top of the funnel. And then I'm gonna add some yellow. And I'm getting some really pretty designs here. I'm really wrapped with these. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. Wait for the soap to sink all the way down and pop your funnel into the boiling hot water. And give that a spray to pop any bubbles. There we go, so that's the first two done. They're looking beautiful. Uh, I need to fish out a funnel now. I'm just gonna fish it out with my spoon. I've got a piece of paper towel over here that I'm uh, just drying it off on. There you go, it's ready to go. 
Uh, next, we'll do the bunny spray. Pour a layer of the base soap, which in this case is blue. Pop the funnel in. Gonna pour some pink. I am running out of soap here. I really do not have a lot left at all. Let that sink all the way to the bottom. I'm gonna go blue again. There we go. And some peach, which will contrast nicely with the blue. While that's sinking to the bottom, I will fish out another funnel because I need one to do my last soap. <clears throat> there we go. Just drying that off. Pull this one out. Pulling it out often uh, leaves a bubble, but that's okay. You can just spray it with the alcohol and get rid of those bubbles. Okay, so my very last one, here we go. Spray it. This is the peach egg. Oh, I'm doing this left-handed. There we go, a bit wobbly. That's nearly all that soap gone. Pop the funnel in. Gonna do pink next. Okay, oh, and as I'm pouring that, it is solidifying just as it's coming out. See how that's not sinking down? <clears throat> that has just solidified just as I've poured it. I'm gonna put these back on the double boiler. The problem is, is I have only a teeny tiny amount of soap left and um, it's just setting because there's just such a small amount there you go. I couldn't get that soap out of the funnel. It's, it's full of soap. So I'll just pop that in there. This is what you don't want to happen, folks. Okay, so this is my other funnel. I've just fished that one out. I'll have to try and use this one. Hopefully I can get this soap liquid again. There's really not a lot left. I also run the risk of burning it as well because there's such a small amount. I'm just going to push this down here. I'll try again. Uh, but I do not have a lot of confidence that this one is going to turn out very well at all. So, second time round, I'll bring this soap over. I'm just going to pour some pink because I've completely run out of peach. I'll pop that in there. Yeah, it's just, it's solidifying really quickly. If I had a little bit of extra soap, this wouldn't have happened, so... That's why I always say make sure you add extra for wastage because, you know, you do not want to run out. Okay, I'm just going to try and pour this as best as I can. I'll see. I've got a little bit of blue left, so I'll just stick that in there too just for the heck of it. There we go. It is a bit of a mess, that one. Uh, I'll give it a spray. It's a bit lumpy on top too because the soap isn't really fluid and it's all just sort of bunching together there we go it's sort of like a, a sort of rainbowy blobby one that one and that'll just have to do all right i'm going to let these set overnight and i'll come back tomorrow and show you how to get them out of the cookie cutters it is now the next day and these have set hard overnight uh, this one here, I did add a little bit more soap to it. I was trying to improve it, but I think I ended up just making it worse. So it is what it is. To get your soaps out of the cookie cutters, the first step is to lift the cookie cutter up from the greaseproof paper and just start pulling off the plasticine. So this plasticine can be reused. You will need to um, pull out any of the bits that have soap stuck to them if you've made a mess like I have. But um, once you've done that, you can absolutely reuse the plasticine again. As you can see, the plasticine does come away quite easily from the cookie cutters. You can just pull it away with your fingers. Uh, a little bit might get stuck in some tight nooks and crannies, but that's okay. You can just pull that out as well. Okay, I'm just gonna pop this out of the way now. Uh, so I don't like to fill my cookie cutters all the way to the top with soap. I try and avoid it because what you can do then to get them out is you can turn them over and that little millimeter or two that you've got from the top of the cutter, you can use that to start getting the soap moving. So 
the the hardest thing to do when getting uh, the soap out of the mold is to get the soap moving at first but once you can get it moving uh, you pretty much can just separate the cutter from the soap and then just use your thumbs to push it through the cutter and release the entire bar got a little bit of plasticine on it there but there you go there is my beautiful blue bunny he's lovely uh, so again I'm going to try the same with this bunny paw I'm just using my thumb to push it around I'm, I'm spinning it as I push just to make sure that I'm doing it evenly on both sides so it doesn't get jammed you can't do this if the soap is not fully set because you will just end up putting your thumb through it so the soap has to be fully set before you try and get it out of the cookie cutter I'm gonna do the same one here just spinning and pushing firmly with my thumb and releasing the soap from the cooking cup cutter evenly there we go there we go so there's my three beautiful ones that worked perfectly now this one is going to be tricky because with all the fussing about that i did i went over the height of the cookie cutter and now i don't have any sort of leverage with which to get this soap moving so what I do have is this rubber gripping pad. So this is a rubber grip pad that you use to get the lids off jars. You know, if you can't get a good grip on your lid to turn it and get it off the jar, this is what you use. Uh, so I'm using it to grip the cookie cutter. And then with my thumb, I'm trying to push the soap through. I wasn't able to do it without the gripping pad because my hands are a little bit greasy from handling the soap. But with the grip pad, I was able to get some leverage and push that out quite easy. So there we go. All right, so here I have four Easter cookie cutters. There we go. And I also have four beautiful melt and pour soap bars that I was able to make from the cookie cutters because I tweaked them with some plasticine to make a non-leak soap mold. So there you go. I really hope you enjoyed this tweak of the week. If you did, please like and subscribe and stick around because there will be more tweaks of the week. There are more tutorials, recipes and inspiration on the Dancing Soap Dish website. So don't forget to check it out. Thanks, guys. Enjoy.